What I want to do, I want to preach, I'm going to try to preach. I'm going to preach and minister on the subject today. We're in a series that we're calling Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Unleash. Everybody say Unleash. Can y'all imagine a 21st century church that is unleashed and doing what God has called her to do? Listen, there's no sense in um, 1,500 to 1,800 pastors monthly getting out of the ministry. There's no sense in that. There's no sense in, since COVID, the year season here, over 10,000 churches have closed their door. There, there's no sense in that. Listen, we serve a God that's real. Listen, I, I realize there's fakes all over the place. I realize, listen, because Satan hates when God's people come together on purpose. When we start touching and agreeing, we don't have to believe just the same. But when we start believing that his name is Jesus, that everything starts to change. And so I'm just telling you, we serve a God that I really believe. And with all my heart, we're going to see greater things in this latter end. Than they did at the beginning. I, I didn't say it. I'm just believing with the word of God. So listen. I want y'all to remember. God gave five ministry gifts. Five ministry gifts to the body of Christ. To me and you. To operate in the church. Now listen to me. You don't hear sermons like this. Because people are scared to death to talk about the apostle. They're scared to death to talk about the prophet. They're scared to death to talk about the evangelist. Well I take it back. That Everybody knows Dr. Billy Graham. Everybody loves evangelism. The pastor and the teacher. But nobody don't want to talk about all five. But we are. Because if I don't preach the canon, the whole counsel of the Bible, I'm doing y'all wrong. And I want y'all to be educated. I want y'all to understand why God designed, why God created. Listen, he did not create the church and go, man, I made a bad mistake. He created us. Watch. Listen to me. He created the church to change the, change the cities, to change the nation, to change the world. He done, he's going to do that through us. Y'all realize that? Look at your neighbor and say, tag, you're it. And look at your other one and say, tag, you're it too. Yeah. So what are the five ministry gifts? I, I know I've talked about this and talked about this and talked about this. But watch this. I'm going to keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it until you get it. What are the five ministry gifts that God gave to operate, not, not just to read about, to operate in his church? Five gifts. That God gave to operate in the church according to Ephesians chapter 4. Y'all ready? <laughs> oh, five. Here we go, God. The first one was the apostle. The apostle governs the church. And I'm going I'm to go, go through this very quickly, but i got to keep this in your spirit. The apostle governs the church. In other words, the visionary. He's, he's the visionary man. He goes from town to town, city to city, and he casts vision. A lot of them say he's like church planners. So the apostle governs the church. The apostle Paul was not a pastor. The apostle Paul would go to Thessalonica, Corinth, Ephesus, all the, all the churches in Asia Minor, and he would give them counsel. He would be the overseer. He'd say, this thus saith the Lord. This is what God is telling you to do. He was the apostle. He was the apostle. The second one was the prophet. Everybody say prophet. prophet. And nobody wants to talk about the prophet. No, nobody wants to talk about the prophet. And matter of fact, you don't even see the prophet a lot of times stand up in churches anymore. And let me, let's, let's do a quick business meeting. Y'all ready? How many times have you seen a prophet stand up in a Southern Baptist church and give a word? I've seen it one time. I've seen it one time in 24 years of ministry. One time. And so I know I'm telling you the truth. And matter of fact, the apostle and the prophet are talked about more, talked about more, talked about more than the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. So we better start paying attention to the word of God. Because this is what we're going to stand on. The evangelist. Though the prophet, he guides the church. Let me go back. The prophet guides the church. In other words, he gives revelation. He gives revelation. Now listen, if a prophet stands up and gives a deadly, nasty word... It's not encouraging, comforting, or building up. That is not a prophet. A prophet, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3, it, it, it builds up. It encourages. And watch it. It gives you comfort. That's what a prophet does. That's what a prophet does. Everybody getting it so far? I, I got a lot of ground to cover. Evangelist. It gathers the church. The evangelist, one of the greatest evangelists, Dr. Billy Graham. He was a soul winner. 
a soul winner. They, they, they're trying to get all the, the records right now of all the souls that were saved by Dr. Billy Graham. Well, let me refer. God just corrected me by Jesus Christ working through Dr. Billy Graham. See, the Holy Ghost will speak to you if you listen. And right now, they're already over 2.5 million people. And they're still counting. So listen, I'm just telling you, what a hero. What a man of God. He was an evangelist. He would go from town to town, city to city, church to church, and he would be a soul winner. His sole purpose in life was to plunder hell and to populate heaven. A pastor, one of my assignments is to guard the church. If I see the wolf on the horizon, I'm supposed to lay across the threshold and protect the sheep. I, that's what we do. We, we protect the church. The last one is teacher. A teacher grounds the church with wisdom and understanding. My people perish for the lack of knowledge, wisdom. So a teacher will get up and give you instruction to give you wisdom and to give you guidance and to give you understanding. Is everybody with me? Say, I'm with you. Now listen, I know what I'm getting ready to tell you, say to you, I know you already know this, at least here. But I felt compelled by God to, to say this over your life again right now. I really did. And God wanted me to remind myself and remind you that he was the one. I know this is so elementary. I know that what I'm getting ready to say, I even, when I wrote my notes, I said, God, they're going to laugh at me. You can come up here right now and look at my notes. I, I said, God, they're going to laugh at me when I say this. But listen to me. God wanted me to remind myself and you that he is the creator of the church. I feel the Holy Ghost. God built the church. Somebody say amen. God designed the church. And God is the giver of the gifts to the church. Your gift is not by man. Man cannot give you what God has already gave you. Somebody give God praise in here. And I'm so thankful that God still owns Elkhorn Baptist Church. This is, I am not the owner of this church. The deacons are not the owner of this church. Nobody is the owner but God. Everybody say, but God. I felt like I need to say that. Because if we're not careful, y'all will start putting your faith in me. And I'm not God. If you start putting your faith in man... Man will let you down every single time. But I know a man named Jesus that when you're down, he'll pick you up. I know a man named God and Jesus Christ worked through the Holy Spirit that when you're dead in your grave, he'll resurrect you to a new life. I know a God that'll take alcohol right off your breath. I know a God that'll take drugs right out of your system. He can do it. He's God. He's the owner. Everybody say he's the owner. Don't y'all forget that. Don't y'all forget that. Because we got a lot of churches being started by man. So, how does the five-fold ministry work? Listen to me. I'm trying to teach. How does the five-fold ministry work? Because that's important. You know, there's five, five gifts, gifts to the ministry. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. How do they work in the local church? You got to know this. I know this is simple too, but here is the answer. I know y'all going to shout on this one. Are you ready? Under God's anointing. I know y'all already knew that, but I'm going to remind you. Listen, you cannot, I feel the host, you cannot buy God's anointing. You can't be good enough for God's anointing. Listen to me, you can have perfect church attendance, but that does not make you anointed. You can quote the Bible, but that does not make you anointed. You can be a worship leader. You can be a singer, but that does not make you anointed. Watch this. I'm going to mess y'all up. You can even be a pastor preacher, but that don't make you anointed. That don't make you anointed. The anointing, listen to me, the anointing is a gift from God. And that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. God is the giver of the anointing. And listen to me, the anointing, the anointing is what breaks yokes. Y'all understand me? The Bible says the anointing is what breaks yokes. The anointing, watch me, is what pulls down strongholds. The anointing is, is, is what opens up doors. The anointing is what sets you aside. That when people try to rise up against you, touch not my anointing and do my people no harm. The anointing, everybody say the anointing. The anointing. It's the anointing. What, what, is, what is the anointing? What is 
the word anointed mean? Because see, a lot of you, a lot of us, and I didn't understand this until I really become a student of the Bible and start studying the Bible and asking God these questions. God, what did you mean by that? God, what do you mean by this? Scripture must interpret Scripture. You can't take one scripture out of 31,173 verses in the Bible and make a doctrine, make a theology. Your scripture must interpret scripture. Got to. What does, when God says anointing, anointing, everybody say anointing. Everybody else, anointing. What does that mean? Well, it means this. To be set aside for a kingdom purpose. Not what? Look at me. Not for money. Not for your agenda. Not for people to look at you and say, boy, they're anointed. No, no, no. God gave his church the anointing of his spirit, watch me, to set them aside for a kingdom purpose. Everybody say amen. amen. For a kingdom purpose. How many of you know we got a lot of kingdoms down here? Come on, y'all talk to me. We've made church about the kingdom and not the kingdom. We've made pastor and preacher and prophet and evangelist about the kingdoms and not the kingdom. And I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, listen to me. The Bible is real. Every word in that scripture is real. And whether y'all believe it or not, I feel like Elijah this morning. I don't care if 450 prophets of Elkhorn try to stand up against me today. I'm going to prophesy. I'm just telling you, listen to me, it's time. we got to make your minds up. Everybody watch this say, make your mind up. Make your mind up. Make your mind up. Make your mind up. Either it's real or I say it all the time. Let's go home. Let's close the door because all you're doing is building a kingdom. It does not impress God that Elkhorn is one of the top five churches in South Central. It does not impress God that we got 925 seats. What impresses God is that you can lay hands upon a sick and watch them and recover. What, what impresses God is that his gifts are moving and rotating and back in his house. What, what blesses God is God says, that's the church that I sent my son to die for. God did not die for a church on life support. It's time to pull the plug. Uh. Uh. Here's another thing that God told me. And y'all hang on because we're going to get down right now. <laughs> Here's one thing I need y'all to know. If God has not given you the grace, watch. If God has not given you the grace to accomplish his assignment, you will not last. I'm going to say that again. If God has not given you the grace for the assignment that he has put on your life, you will not last. How come we got people that will start in the ministry and never finish in the ministry? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all? How come we got people that will start in the ministry and not finish in the ministry? See, y'all ask these questions, but y'all are scared to answer these questions. They're not called. Cricket, cricket. Listen to me. At 1101. Everybody say 1101. While your, your church mouse is here, can out shout you. Anybody can buy a piece of ordination paper for $25 on, online. And hanging on the wall. Anybody, listen to me, I know jokers today that have went online, paid $25 to buy a piece of ordination paper and said they're called to preach. And here's what happens. Here's what happens. Man, hell starts breaking loose. And things start happening in your life. And you don't know what else to do. You know why? Here's what I wrote in, in, my, in my personal notes. You didn't call yourself and you can't keep yourself. God is the one that calls you. God is the one. Watch this. It don't matter what people think about me. Because why? Y'all didn't call me. Well, Brian, we set you aside. You may have set me aside, but you didn't call me. Gifts and callings come from the Lord. Come on, y'all. Y'all, y'all see, I think we really want sermons like this back in the church because we can learn a lot from the Bible, where God's at, what God is doing. Listen, you can buy ordination papers all day for $25 on the, online. But I'm just sitting telling you, when God's fingerprint, 
is on your life. When God's touch, the touch of heaven is on your life. The anointing and the oil of God is on your life. Nobody can touch it. Nobody can stop it. No, hey, nobody can do anything about it. They may hate your guts. But watch this. Can't touch this. <laughs> I have fun when I preach. Because if you act too serious, oh, if, if y'all for all, how thou doest. If, if we were born in King James days, none of us would be here today. Because we have a hard time coming to church, <laughs> more or less killing a lamb. I don't even know where. So uh, I got a testimony. I remember going to one of my spiritual fathers, Dr. James Jones. I talk about him a lot because he was the first man in Campbellsville, Kentucky to believe in me. He believed in me enough. <laughs> he looked at me and he said, what are you doing Sunday night? And I'm like, uh, going to church? He said, I need you to preach for me. And man, listen, um, I got up there to preach and I, I made my opening statement was this. I got it on uh, tape right now, cassette tape. That's how old I am. I said, if y'all hear something knocking, that's my knees. You know, I don't want to forget where God brought me from. Because here's the, here's the danger of the anointing. If you don't know where God brought you from, if you don't know where God has brought your bad self from, if you forget what God has done for you in your life, you'll lose your praise. I don't want to ever forget that when people used to look at me and say, you're going to be just like your daddy, you ain't worth a Nothing. I look, I gotta be careful. You're born on the wrong side of the tracks, Brian. And so, man, listen, I've heard all this stuff. But if you're anointed and God has set you aside, if God be for you, it don't matter who in the world comes against you. God will open up a door. God will split a red sea. God will shut a lion's mouth. God will do it all to keep you in the ministry. I told Dr. James Jones, I said, uh, the Lord's called me to preach. <laughs> I'll never forget this man of God's answer to me. Here's what he said, and I wrote this down, and I quote, time will tell. Now, I know that's not profound to a lot of you, but I was wanting Doc to look at me and say, you'll do well. I was wanting him to look at me, Drew, and say, go get him, whippersnapper. I was wanting him to look at me and say, oh, well, Brian, that is wonderful. He said these words. Time will tell. If you're called by God to lead in ministry, time will tell. If you're called by God to preach the word of God, time will tell. Y'all just missed a five-second praise right there. I'm telling you, time We'll tell in Jesus Christ's name. Yeah, let's give, him, let's give him praise. Amen. That's a good word. It's a good word. It's a good word. Let me give you this. If you're disconnected, if you're disconnected from God, if you're disconnected from his church, if you're disconnected from his people, if you have unforgiveness in your life, if you're mad and you're mean and you're cruel and you're mean spirit and you're judgmental, listen to me. Listen to this. I can tell you this from experience. Don't expect the anointing. Don't expect the anointing. Don't expect the anointing. <laughs> Listen, here's the secret to it. You ready? Love. Love. I feel the Holy Ghost. It's love. Nails didn't hold Jesus on that cross. Love did. It. <laughs> it's love. Love is what covers a multitude of sin. Love is when you keep making a mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. We got a God that keeps reaching down and grabbing you and pulling you back to love. Love will keep you when everybody else lets go of you. Everybody say love. love. Listen, if you don't want to walk in the love, the spirit of love, you'll never carry the anointing. Never. Here's something else God showed with me. Showed me. He showed me a lot Friday. <laughs> He's real. Here's what else. I believe it's going to help set somebody free right now. I want y'all leaning. Everybody leaning in? Everybody, everybody do it. Just lean in real quick. Lean in. Lean in. Lean in. Here we go. 
Yeah, yeah, lean in. That's good. I need, I need y'all to lean in. Here's what, a, here's what a Dr. Harold Wilmington said. If somebody will look you in the eye when you're preaching, they're teachable. I'm going to say it again. If somebody will look you in the eye when you're preaching, they're teachable. The ones that are going, I'm telling you, that's it's called the spirit of distraction. And be careful because somebody's blood's on your hands. What if somebody was watching how you worship today? Is that convincing enough to go to heaven? What if somebody was watching you right now? How you listen to the word of God? If you lean in, give God your ears. Are you convincing enough that somebody hallelujah, can look at your life and say, man, they're paying attention. They're in it to win it. No matter what happens, they stick it out. Are you convincing enough today? If somebody's watching you, are you convincing enough to say, I want what they got? I want to go to heaven. It should be so contagious in here today. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Here's what God spoke to me. Stop looking. Stop looking for approval from people. Mm. Listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. It's so true because in my counseling, here's, here's a lot of, a lot of you are allowing other people who don't even have a clue about your assignment, who don't know nothing about your life, or nothing about your call. You're allowing people Listen, if I was listening to people, I would not be your pastor today. Watch. God said, thus saith the Lord, stop looking for approval from people who will never understand the weight of your assignment or your anointing. I do not expect you as my friends, as a family, to understand the calling of God upon my life. He didn't call you. He called me that time. Why do we want man's approval? I remember in my ordination service, had Dr. Steve Ayers and James Jones and all those. To me, I was so humbled <laughs> to even be sitting there with them. Now, I'll never forget Dr. James Jones. Here he is again, Joker. He said, Brian, what if we so choose not to call you? And I said, oh, God. Maybe they're thinking about not calling me. Brian, what if we say no? What if we vote no? What are you going to do? And it was like the Holy Ghost. <laughs> come up in me. I said, I'm going to preach anyhow. I'm going to preach anyhow. Because look, if you're waiting for man to approve the stamp of heaven on your life, you will sit still the rest of your life. That's okay, I'm preaching myself. See, my calling and your calling, listen to me. God, I gotta get this in your spirits. It is a gift from God. Do y'all understand? Elkhorn Baptist Church, watch. It is a gift from God. The praise team is not here for your entertainment. It is a gift from God. His word, hallelujah, is a gift. Your worship is a gift back to him. Your voice is a gift back to him. God is the only one that can save. God is the only one that can deliver. God is the only one that can heal you. Yeah, God is the only one that can give you a gift. All other gifts come and go. There's one thing. Watch, I'm trying to help. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says that gifts and callings are irrevocable. Irrevocable. So watch. If you're called and you don't answer your calling, you'll stand before God. Yep. You sure will. I, well, Brian, what if man don't like your preaching? <laughs> I'm preaching to lost people. Because say people, we should be so mature right now. We should be doing the work and the assignment of the disciple. And when do you become a disciple? When you become a disciple maker. Huh. God is downloading up in me today. Yeah, God is the only one. He's the giver. So, so here we go. I, I'm almost finished, I think. Why do you need the anointing? That is a question that I get all the time. Why do I need the anointing? Why do I need the anointing? I'm going to tell you today, and straight out of the Bible, 
It's straight out of the Bible. Because watch, I could give you my opinion, and you, everybody go like this. That's my opinion. It's my opinion. That's my opinion. It's a bunch of hot air. Y'all missed a praise break right there. <laughs> Somebody got it, yeah. It's a bunch of hot air. Why do we need the anointing? Why do you need to be set aside? Here it is. The anointing can do what other things cannot do. The anointing can do what other things cannot do. Watch the Bible. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Drew, I heard you quote this a couple weeks ago, and I dedicate this back over your life. You, you quoted it two weeks ago. It stuck in my spirit, and I said, all right, I got this. So Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. Why do we need the anointing? The anointing can do what other things cannot do. Here's what it says. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He, God, Jesus, Holy Ghost, has anointed me, anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recover the sight for the blind and to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's why you need to be anointed. Yeah, yeah. See, we churchy people, we 21st century people, we think it's the pastor's job, the deacon's job, everybody else's job to go visit the sick, to go visit the prisons. I got news for you, and I stopped by 3145 East Elkhorn Road. It's our job. He wrote that verse for you. He wrote that verse for me. Can y'all imagine, I feel it, if from this side... All the way back over to Rafferty. If we would accept Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. That God's talking to me. I got good news in me. I can lay hands upon the sick and watch them recover. I don't have to call the preacher or the deacon. I am the pastor. I am the leader. I am the evangelist. I am the apostle. I am. Hallelujah. I can do it. I can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You. I can do it. But listen to me. I'm telling you, God has anointed you. Now, I hope, I pray to put a burr under your saddle. To preach, watch, the good news. Quit speaking death over people. Quit speaking death over people. God hates dead things. He didn't even stay up in a dead tomb. He rented, he don't own nothing like that. Speak life. Everybody say, speak life. Here's what I'm saying. Your words changes things. You want a better marriage? Come on, y'all. This is Elkhorn. Speak life over it. Even if your wife's having a bad hair day. <laughs> Honey, I'm sort of jealous this morning. You got more hair than I do. But you sure are pretty. Gary, you look good. I, I ain't talking to y'all. Good, we're talking to you. <laughs> yeah, you look good today. Look at you smile. Look, I love when Dana smiles because I've seen a lot of frowns. But man, listen to me. The ones you love, you speak life over. The ones you love, you ask the grandmother, how, how many grandkids you got? They'll pull out a Rolodex. <laughs> oh, there's Jeffrey and there's. <laughs> And a granny don't talk bad about her grandbabies. She loved every one of them. I tried to make granny love me more. She's like, honey, I love y'all, y'all. I said, granny, I got blonde hair. And she's like, I don't care. Listen to me. Speak life. Speak blessings. Elkhorn, look at me. Please lean in here. Because listen, I feel something in my spirit. I believe God has commissioned us to do what nobody else wants to, wants to do. I prophesy over your life today. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. It is time to lay hands on sick people. It is time to prophesy and bring the best out of people. Bring life, 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 life. Get up and walk. Life. In Jesus' name. Do it. The anointing is what breaks yokes. This is number two. I'm almost done. That's the second time. Third, when I do it three times, y'all come. Number two. Everybody say number two. Are y'all getting this? Are y'all really, I got two people, are y'all getting this? I want y'all to participate. Are y'all getting this word? You need to be anointed. Watch the second thing. Why do I need to be anointed? Watch this. Because the anointing changes the atmosphere. 
Y'all remember Mark chapter 14? Mark chapter 14. There was a little girl named Mary. We read this all the time, but I I don't want y'all to miss what I'm getting ready to say. Mary brought Jesus Christ her alabaster box. It was oil, precious perfume, some translations say. A year's worth of wages. I love God. Have you ever put a year's worth of wages at his feet? Me too. I'm talking to me too. Listen, the Bible says, everybody say the Bible said. (laughs) The Bible said in Mark 14 that the fragrance of the oil, the anointing, oil represents the anointing, filled the room. Listen to me. Here's what I'm saying that I'm preaching today. There can be such an anointing on your life and on my life. That when we leave here today and go back to work, I'm telling you, you can change your work atmosphere. I'm telling you, you can change the school system. I'm telling you, you give me some worshipers at Elkhorn, it don't matter if five show up and say, I don't care about work. We can, I'm telling you, when worship fills the atmosphere, it changes everything. It changes everything. The anointing will change your life. Here's what happened. There were some people that were spectating. We got a lot of spectators. God says, I don't want you to be a spectator. I want you to do what Mary did. I want you to become a participator. What she did, what she did will be talked about. What she did, and I love this, because God rebuked the spectators. He says, "What what she did is what you need to be doing. And so in Jesus Christ's name, what I'm saying is this. I'm looking out here today. Y'all know what I see? Y'all think I wrote this in my notes. And this, this happened Friday. I said, I can see a bunch of spiritual thermostats. Spiritual thermostats. On this stage right now, I'm sweating like nobody's business. It's hot up here. Maybe it's the anointing. I'm just saying this. When the Holy Ghost shows up, the temperature changes. When God shows up, everything changes. When God shows up, people who were lost, messed up, undone, on the wrong side of the tracks. I'm telling you, in Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ shows up, working through the Holy Spirit, he will draw man, he will draw woman, he will draw teenagers when the anointing shows up. That's why we need to be anointed. There was a preacher. I talked with him. He, he's, this has been, gosh, two decades ago. He looked at me and he said, Brian, he said, I've been pastoring a church for 20 years and I've never led a soul to Jesus Christ in 20 years. 20 years. Now, I, he asked me, what should he do? And I told him gently, you, you need to find your calling. <laughs> but see, a lot, that offends some of you. Here's what, here's, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm, if, if God is in your life, the oil will automatically be turned in your life. The oil will automatically come out of your life. You don't have to tell somebody to preach it when they call to be a preacher. You don't have to tell somebody that. When I'm called to preach. My God, ask Dana. I'll be in the shower. I'll preach like that. I'll preach like I got a thousand people in front of me. Do I remember when I first got called to preach? Ask Dana. I would stand in front of the mirror because I wanted to be, I wanted, I wanted the nice comb over, the suit. I did, I wanted that stuff. And, and I'm sitting there going, and Dana wouldn't leave the house. I'm like, Dana, you got to leave. I wouldn't preach in front because I'm sitting, I was so nervous. And when she wouldn't leave, Travis, I'd go out in the woods. And I remember this. I swear I remember this. I was so hungry. I just wanted to be used by God. I just wanted to be anointed. I just wanted God to touch me. And it didn't matter who was watching. It didn't matter who was there. I'm telling you, I would preach to the trees would wave at me. Hallelujah. I would preach. My dog even knew I got saved. The animals in creation, either they would join in chirping or they would fly away. God, I don't want to lose my anointing. God, I don't want to lose that touch of heaven upon my life. 
God, it don't matter if there's one or a thousand. God, I'm going to preach your name. I'm going to live my life for you, Lord. It don't matter what, what the title of the church or the denomination is. I preach for you. I preach for your kingdom. So here's what I'm saying. Church, it's time to change the atmosphere. See, we know that here. I'm asking you today, are you, are you going to leave war out? I'm, I'm, all, I'm war slick out. When I get through preaching, I can take my shirt and wring it out. You say, well, Brian, you just got diabetes and you sweat a lot. Well, you're not a doctor. I'm telling you, I feel the oil. I'm telling you what the churches need back in her. They need the glory of heaven, the glory of God back in her. We are the most blessed people in the world, and you got to beg people to worship Jesus Christ. Over in countries, let's go to China really quick. They would die to worship Jesus Christ. We live in America, the land of the free, where people died on the fields, shedding their blood, and you can't even get people. I, I, I agree with Haywood Reiner. And I quote, Haywood says, you'll never see me chasing a Christian. Now, don't get mad at me. Haywood said it. Everybody say, that's good, Haywood. We spend more time chasing, chasing people who are so-called called. And we're still changing diapers. Dana, go, Dana, go start the car. Go start the car. <laughs> I'm for real. Start the car. You know what? I shouldn't feel like that, but I do. I feel like this should be a safe place where the children of God say, you know what? It's true. We live in the land of the free. When Jesus Christ shed his blood that I could be here today. I owe my life. I owe everything to him. And you got to beg Christians. You got to beg them to give him praise. When you're saved and born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. And you got the oil of heaven coming out of your life. Whew. Let me go on. Last one. This is going to be so profound. It's going to be great. I need a napkin or something. Thank you. Ooh. Courtney, I need to get that handkerchief back that you made for me. I know it. <laughs> number three. Everybody say number three. I'm almost done, I promise, I promise. It's 1128. Yeah, praise team, come. <laughs> My associate called him. He prophesied. He said, praise team, come now, you know, in Jesus Christ's name. Number three, everybody say number three. I'm almost done, I said. Yeah, there you go, baby girl. Preach that, teach that. Boy, the kids are shouting, yeah. Listen, number three, it's so good. It's the, why do you need to be anointed? This is so profound. Because God said so. <laughs> it's okay. Because God said so. Not me. Not your denomination. God said so. God said so. Remember his gifts have purpose. He did not give somebody a gift to get on television to become a millionaire. We, we listen. This is not my notes. I'm going to tell you anyhow. I know a person that gave somebody a hundred dollars. Everybody say a hundred dollars. To get holy water. So she showed up, and she was so excited because she had holy water. And she made an appointment with me, and she come in. She said, Brian, I've got it. And I said, all right, well, you got it. And she put out a little thing, little, little vial like that, and it was holy water. And she said, I got it. I, got, I asked her, how much you give for that? A hundred dollars. But Brian... This holds my healing. Brian, this, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not lying to y'all. We live crazy. This right here holds my anointing. 
And she said, you want me to anoint you? I said, no. I mean, I, listen. Mm. I'm being honest with y'all. She said, what do you think about it? I said, you wasted $100. Hey, listen, she got, I don't even know what she, oh, oh, but listen, I'm telling y'all, we've got the anointing, it's in here. I've got the healer, and he's in here. I've got the, the double portion, and he's in here. I've got the favor of God, and he's in here. I don't take no oil. I don't take no water. I got him, somebody give him praise. I'm telling you the truth. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. We got him. Put that hundred dollars in the tithe. Preach. <laughs> so uh, let me let me give you scripture because if I don't give you scripture, that means it's my opinion. Now listen, y'all gotta write really fast on this one. If you need my notes, I'll send them to you. I'll send them to you. How many of y'all know God's up in this house? How many of y'all feel the Holy Ghost? How many of y'all know that the anointing of God is here right now? That's all that matters. Watch. Here's some scripture. I'm going to go fast. 1 John 2, 27. Luke 4, 18. James 5, 14. Isaiah 61, 1 through 11. Mark 6, 13, 1 John 2, 20. I'm going fast on it. It's okay. I told you I'll send y'all my notes. 1 Samuel 16, 13, Joel 2, 28, Exodus 29, 7, Psalms 23, 1 through 6. Oh, I'm tired of reading it. Psalms 89, 20. Let me just go ahead and say this. I wish I had some proof that there was anointing. <laughs> There's all kinds. Watch. There are over a hundred. Everybody say a hundred. Over a hundred scriptures in the Bible. Why we need the anointing of God. Over a hundred. I'm declaring today, you are God's anointed. I declare today, God's hand is upon this section, upon this section, upon this section, and upon this section. I'm declaring today that you will lay hands upon the sick. I am declaring today that you will prophesy in his name. Church, it's the anointing that makes the difference. Somebody say amen. It's the anointing that makes the difference. So I'll leave you with this. What are you carrying? What are you carrying on your life? Because you're carrying something. Watch. I guarantee you I guarantee you right now, everybody in here is carrying something in their heart right now. Your spiritual life right now, everybody's carrying something. Are you carrying the oil of heaven on your life? Are you God's anointing? Are you carrying God's anointing? And here's the deal. Do you want to be anointed by God? Do, do y'all want to be anointed by God? Do y'all want to be set aside? Because watch. Well, I had old pastor tell me, he said, Rafferty, he was an old geezer. He said, Rafferty, you got as much of Jesus as you want. That's right. So if you don't want yours, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Watch, you can go to church all your life. <laughs> and all you'll become is a good old saint. So in Jesus Christ's name, I commission every one of you. Every one of you into the gospel ministry. Every one of you, you're called by God. Everybody's got a gift. You ready? Your gift has your name on it, but you got to open it. You got to open the gift. You got to open the gift. So, Father God, I preach your word. Lord, this altar is open. God, I pray today that people. Well, just realize, dear God, that we are the anointed ones. God, we carry the oil. And God, I pray, fill this altar with your presence. Bless your people.
Use them for your glory. And Lord, I call the five-fold ministry into this church. God, with purpose. And God, we know our assignment. In Elkhorn today, we accept it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in all God's people said, amen. Let's stand to our feet all over this house.